Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tim Ports. Thanks for joining us here this afternoon for a short discussion about uh, Pellet Mill Magazine. Uh, Pellet Mill Magazine, now uh, in its uh, fifth year, fifth full year, just wrapped up the final issue of 2015. Uh, started as a supplement to Biomass Magazine, actually a twice a year supplement. And I think its uh, growth uh, can best be explained by the growth, rapid growth of the industry. If you look at the history of the title, uh, 20 issues since we started back in 2011, uh, 10 of those have been produced in the last two years. So um, we've had a tremendous amount of fun getting to know the industry and putting together what we believe is the industry's most widely read and counted on title. Uh, today I'm joined by John Nelson, Marketing and Sales Director here at BBI, and, and really what we'd like to accomplish in the next uh, half hour or so is really lay out for you a business case as to why your participation in Pellet Mill Magazine is a good idea if you're trying to grow your business inside the uh, pellet category in the broader biomass segment. Um, We'll go through, uh, before we get started, I want to talk just a little bit about how we're going to uh, approach the next half hour. So next slide for me, if we could, gentlemen, and talk a little bit about the uh, agenda for today. We'll start um, shortly after I get done talking here. We'll pass the microphone over to uh, John, and John's going to talk a little bit about our, our audience, who they are, where they hail from, what do we know about them. We'll talk about some circulation numbers. Uh, John's going to talk a lot about our, our online presence, tremendous amount of traffic to the, to the website and our, our pellet content there. And we'll talk very briefly about uh, the webinar series and that platform and, and how sponsors leverage our webinar platform to, to really reach an audience and then understand who that audience is. It's a very dynamic and interesting platform. We launched it uh, about three years ago, and it's been very, very successful, not only for us, but again, our sponsors. At that point, John will turn the call back over to me, and I'll talk a little bit about how we organize every issue of Pellet Mill Magazine, and then I'll go through an issue-by-issue issue preview of what we have planned for 2016. Definitely want to uh, stick around to the end where John will be sharing a, a webinar discount for those of you that have joined us. Uh, before I continue and, and, and hand the, the call over to John, I want to talk just briefly about the industry. Uh, in the last uh, week and a half or so, we've published three different earnings calls, um, news items on biomassmagazine.com. They're there now. I just went and looked. They're still on the crawl. And all of them said uh, essentially the same thing about the, the marketplace, and that is that all of these organizations and companies that, that hold investor calls are all looking for the um, industry to continue to grow here, certainly near term. Uh, both Inviva and Rentec said that in their uh, quarterly calls and are expecting really strong growth. Uh, and there's a number of things that are contributing to that. And again, I don't want to necessarily read the whole article, but uh, in the Inviva article, we talk specifically about uh, the reemergence of the uh, Dutch marketplace and what's going to happen there uh, as that policy environment gets stabilized. We just closed a, an entire issue about the Asian market, and uh, that market is there. And I think every uh, industry observer believes that it's going to continue to grow. The, the question, of course, is will North American producers be able to compete with uh, low-cost South, uh, Southeast Asian producers? So it's a really dynamic market and it's growing and there continues to be investment uh, by producers of wood pellets and expansion, retrofits. Um, it's, uh, it's becoming definitely a game of, of low-cost producers so there's investment in efficiency happening in the, uh, in the marketplace. Again, if you look at the Inviva story that uh, Katie Fletcher wrote about their quarterly call, they're going to spend a million dollars on just on their facilities here in the next year. So there's this is a, an industry that continues to generate investment by these organizations. And uh, I'm assuming that's why all of you are on the call today because you'd like to certainly have a piece of that of that opportunity for your own businesses. And, and we believe that we can uh, help you get in front of that audience. So um, again, looking forward to this call very much. Really appreciate everybody for joining us here and, and now I'd like to hand the call over to uh, John Nelson. John again is going to talk about our audience and, and share with you what we know about them and, and where they are 
and where they hail from. So John, looking forward to your comments here. All right, thanks Tim. And, and again, I'm, I'm excited to jump through these numbers and, and let everyone know on the call what they mean and how they can be leveraged. Uh, and, and I really am excited to go through your section as well and, and take a look at the editorial themes and how you've matched that up with our bonus distribution. And quite frankly, this, you know, when you know, uh, the people on today's call, when they walk away from this, I think they're going to understand how you and your team have created the, you know, the pellet industry's most recognizable publication. And, and they will walk away, and we hope you on this call will walk away with you know, understanding how this can be one of your best opportunities to gain exposure in the pellet industry. So let's take a look at this slide uh, and kind of dissect our audience profile. And Pellet Mill Magazine's print edition is distributed to 5,000 readers uh, six times a year. And what's more important is 500 of those readers are current or future producers of pellets or biomass power and heat. And in addition to those 500 producers that we have listed here, we mail a copy of Pellet Mill Magazine to all attendees of the International Biomass Conference and Expo and now the Global Pellet Market Outlook Summit. And, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. But in addition to these two events, it also goes to a number of events and bonus distributions that Tim is going to talk about in his slides. And these include uh, the, the conference put on by USEPA and PFI, so some of the large associations in the industry. And as you can see on this slide, we have readers in 27 countries. The largest category of our circulation consists of producers. They represent about 17% of our base. Um, you can also see the other types of companies that are subscribed. They're equipment and service providers, consultants, technology providers, academics, officials in the government, military, and so on. And, you know, we've, you know, through the years um, and, and, and through vetting out the lists and having our subscribers come in, uh, we can, by purchasing advertising, we can ensure that you can you can reach the right audience and the right people in the densified pellet industry by advertising in Pellet Mill Magazine. So Pellet Mill Magazine shares uh, these numbers and shares the website with Biomass Magazine. So a lot of these numbers are the same as Bio are the same as Biomass Magazine because it is part of the same website and and we've seen it grow during the last few years and. And through our ongoing stories being posted to the site, search engine optimization, content from maps, blogs, online stories, the biomass industry directory, all these ancillary products in addition to the stories that Tim and his team write, we've increased our traffic to the numbers you see on the slide. And, and these are based on Google Analytics and were last updated July 2015. Um, we can get even more numbers or we can dive into this more. So if you're looking at some online advertising, um, you can contact us. You can contact an account representative. You can contact Chip, Howie, or Jeff. And we can dissect these numbers a little more or give you some more analytics if that's what you're looking for. But currently, we're averaging more than 121,000 page views or impressions each month and 72,000 visitors per month. And we've increased the number of page views to our site this year by 8.6%, which is, which is a huge increase. And we, conti we continue to see that grow year in, um, year after year. We also have a strong, you know, some strong search features and a recommended article section on the website that helps visitors find the most relevant stories. In the end, what, what that does is it helps keep the visitors on the site longer and and for an advertiser if you're looking to advertise it means that people are staying on the site longer and have uh, and have more potential to see your ad click on it and go to your website some of the demographics on on our website uh, you know we have visitors from all over the world and the slide in front of you shows the top 10 visits by country. Clearly, the U.S. is at the top by a large margin. But 
second is isn't Canada it's actually the UK and I find that interesting but and then after that we have Canada India and Germany following and so on and so with 45 percent of all visitors being from outside the US this slide is demonstrating that many companies from around the world not just the US are looking to understand the latest biomass related technology and policy so if you're looking to reach both the US biomass audience and the global biomass audience, biomassmagazine.com and online advertising is a great option for you. And again, when we talk about biomass, Pellet Mill Magazine is posted on here as well. So if you're posting uh, online ads to Pellet Mill Magazine or to be around those stories, you're going on the Biomass Magazine website. So you're getting that traffic, you're getting those numbers. So social networks. Uh, this slide is here to, to just make sure you're aware as an advertiser that we are actively promoting our stories on all, all of the sites that you see listed. And based on Google Analytics, we see traffic come in from Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn and other sites, other social media sites. And if you're following the industry, you've probably seen some of our posts or some of Tim's posts or some of Biomass Magazine's posts, but every story every important policy change, every event is posted to these sites. To give you an example, during the past two years, we've tweeted more than 4,000 times and have accumulated 10, 000, more than 10,000 Twitter followers. And so the goal of all this activity is to bring visitors back to biomassmagazine.com to read our stories and see your online advertisements or print advertisements in our digital issue of the magazine. So here we put a slide in to talk about the biomass industry directory, again, one of our ancillary products. Now, we just closed the print issue of the biomass industry directory, which is one of our most popular products that we, we have because it goes to every event. It's around for 12 months, uh, the print issue is, and, it, and it's one of the first things that flies off the shelves at all the events that we attend, but it's it's, why we have it up right now is we want to make sure you, if you're on this call, that you are aware that you receive a free listing in both the print and the digital. So there is a digital industry directory, biomass industry directory on biomassmagazine.com. And I would urge you to go on right now if you haven't done so and create a free listing. That way you're in there and you're in, so when people are and producers are looking for someone for a particular service or a product or some type of new technology, you're one of the first on the list and you're, and you're there. So I would definitely make sure you go on there, become familiar with that, and if you have questions about our biomass industry directory, whether it's advertising or getting your listing on, please, please contact us. We have an e-newsletter, it's called the Pellet Mill Press. Now this newsletter goes out to 22,000 industry professionals from around the world. They're what help drive some of that traffic to our website. So we not only do we have people from the U.S. Uh, and producers, pellet producers in the U.S., uh, we also have people from all over the world. Again, driving those numbers uh, that you saw earlier on our website, uh, that those international numbers, not just our U.S. numbers. So some of our advertising here, it's, it's one of the best ways to really utilize your advertising spend. You can put an ad on this e-newsletter and it goes, as I mentioned, it goes out two times each month and it contains all the original content that Tim and his team have produced and, and you can identify, you can see how many clicks you had per email. You can see, it will even give you the back end of the, of the emails of the people that clicked on your ad. So again, you can generate leads through this process as well. But again, it's original content. It's going to 22,000 people focused on the pellet industry. So here we have uh, a slide talking about our webinar series. And, and sponsorships for the Biomass Magazine's webinar series are an excellent option for companies that are looking to engage a specific audience for 90 minutes at a time. And attendance for these webinars has been extremely strong because these events are content driven and provide valuable information to the attendees provided from our industry expert panelists. 
And so as a sponsor, you have, you'll have your logo with URL listed on all of the emails that are sent out promoting the webinar, which comes to roughly 150,000. Uh, you'll be on the Biomass Magazine website registration page. You'll have online. You'll be on online advertisements, weekly e-newsletter ads, and our on-demand webinar section of Biomass Magazine. So, I can say, without a doubt, because we've been doing these webinars for more than two years, we are confident that this is one of the best ways you can identify companies and people interested in a specific topic within the pellet industry. And most importantly, in addition to all of the promotional benefits I listed, as the main sponsor of our webinars, we physically give you the contact information of all the attendees and registrants of the webinar, and that is email included. Here's a couple examples of our, of our webinars. Um, you can see that we have... Um, we have multiple packages, first off, of, with our webinars. We have a, a, what we call a diamond level package, and that gives you ultimate naming rights, uh, speaking opportunity, uh, and it gives you all the emails. Now we have a smaller package called a gold package, and that package has more, uh, it gives you s some name recognition, gives you a commercial, but you don't gain access to all the registrants. Um, so I do want to make you aware, and if you are interested in, in doing that in, in looking at an option on a specific topic, uh, please contact one of our account managers and we can help design a webinar of, around your product or service. And if it makes sense, uh, Tim and his team will build that content and, and will uh, execute a webinar on your behalf. Here's, an, here's a couple examples of how it looks uh, and some sponsors that we've had, some diamond level sponsors. And you can see we have a quote here as well. And, and before I hand it over to Tim, uh, there's one more point that I think would be extremely beneficial for everyone on this call to know, and, and that's that we have an, out, an outstanding art department that helps produce this magazine. So when you purchase an advertisement with Pellet Mill Magazine, you gain access to the art department to help you design and create your advertisements free of charge. And so it can be a huge cost savings to you as an advertiser, and, and I think that point many times goes under the radar. So if you're, if you're going, well, I want to do an ad, but how am I going to create that ad? Or I don't have access to an art department. I don't have access to an advertising agency. How am I going to create that? Well, we'll, create, we'll work with you. We'll create that ad for you. And so just want to make sure I make that point uh, for everyone on this call. And with that said, Again, I appreciate everyone being on here, and I'm going to hand it over to Tim Ports, our Vice President of BBI International and Executive Editor Thanks. of Biomass Magazine. Thanks a lot, John. It's, it's probably worth mentioning or reminding everybody the very first webinar we ever did, and I think our entire team was kind of wondering what might happen or how it would unfold. Uh, the first webinar that we had was about the pellet industry, and I think it attracted over 450 registrants. Some 250 folks eventually made the call. and. Then uh, that pretty much made our team a believer in the platform's viability and uh, potential. So if that is something that's intriguing, I, I really would recommend you taking, taking John's offer up and, and reaching out to your account representative and talking to them more about it. It's a very, very dynamic platform. I, I want to talk just very briefly before we get into the issue-by-issue issue account of what's going to happen next year and talk just a little bit about how we organize Pellet Mill Magazine. We're really humbled to have um, participation in the title from every association that represents pellet producers in, the, in North America at some point or another uh, participates, whether it's uh, uh, the PFI with Jennifer Hendricks' group or uh, Seth Ginther at uh, UCPA or a representative from the Wood, uh, Wood Pellet Association of Canada. All of these associations contribute columns. Uh, you can see that on the right-hand side, which is important. Uh, this is an opportunity, um, and it, it draws people into the issue. And again, that's the mandate that we have from our advertisers is, okay, I've made an investment in the title, and I need to see that you're doing everything you can to uh, attract people into its pages and keep them there. And we think certainly uh, columns from uh, these associations that represent 
these producers is certainly one way to do that. Additionally, you can see in this particular uh, issue we have a, a column from Chris Weiberg, widely recognized as one of the industry's leading minds on pellet quality. Chris always does a really nice job for us. And then we get into our features, and we organize each issue of Pellet Mill Magazine by theme. And uh, we think long and hard about those themes, work with our editorial um, boards to make sure that our themes are on target. But we really believe that a theme-based approach to these issues um, makes uh, it more likely that people will spend time with the, the entire issue and read every uh, feature and and really work their way through the title and we've done a tremendous job at, at delivering on that over the last couple of years when we moved to this approach for the title we just finished up a story about uh, or a, an entire issue dedicated to Asian markets and Asian producers and I have to say it was a very gratifying it was a challenging issue uh, it was a challenging issue for our team time change and culture and and language uh, barriers made some of those stories difficult to get done, but um, it it really will grab and hold readers. I guarantee you that people will spend a lot of time with that issue. It's a very robust uh, issue, and I think our audience and readership has figured that out. So why don't we just go to the next slide real quick? I want to talk briefly about kind of what we've what we've got in terms of uh, 2016. In 2016, we will publish. Pellet Mill Magazine six times a year. 2015 was the first year that we've done that. Uh, it was successful. Uh, had great participation from advertisers. Our readers seemed to like the uh, increase in frequency, and uh, we're going to carry that forward into 2016. I think this um, slide does a nice job of really demonstrating our commitment to visual excellence uh, in the title. Uh, John talked about the design department that, by the way, is available to advertisers. But it is a really uh, a rewarding experience for me to work through the production process on an issue by issue basis. Uh, we try and shoot a lot of our own photography. Uh, a number of these covers are sh are shot by our team. Um, and then when we don't have photography that makes sense for us, we spend a lot of time really making sure that we've got some great photographs inside of the issue. Again, makes it more compelling, more interesting to read, and uh, guarantees that people will spend time working through that. So. I just wanted to pause there and sort of draw everyone's attention to that. Um, before we move to the first slide, uh, interestingly enough, as I was kind of putting some notes and thoughts together about 2016 editorial calendar, there's really three issues that are dedicated to markets, and then three issues that are dedicated to production ideas or concepts or uh, feedstock sourcing. So it's a really even split between looking at the markets that producers are trying to engage with and sell their product into, and then uh, three issues dedicated to best practices in, in, in the operational side of this business. So well, let's look at the first issue. If we can go to that first slide, we'll talk about January, February. Uh, we are actually in production with this, this issue right now. We had a, a meeting with our editorial board. Probably a good time to talk about that. Uh, again, our target reader are the men and women that own and operate pellet manufacturing facilities in North America. That's that's who we're writing the issue for. Everybody else that reads the issue is a bonus and is an industry observer, but we write this this title for pellet producers. And so we built a board, an editorial board of people who fit that description, and we engage them for uh, decisions about stories that we write in each and every issue. And their feedback matters, and their feedback helps us guarantee that the content that we're producing is of interest and that it's on target and that it's relevant. And they've done a tremendous job for us and a number of them have been a part of our team for a couple of years and have no intention of going anywhere. They enjoy the process, they enjoy being involved and, and we're thrilled to have them and lucky to have them. So we're in production with this issue. Uh, European production and consumption, Europe's far and away the largest sort of regional consumer of wood pellets. Uh, in the world, and they also have a tremendous manufacturing base as well. So a large number of uh, producers in this country and a tremendous amount of wood pellets made in North America end up in Europe, and so this is an opportunity to really examine the marketplace there. Right now it's about an even split in Europe for uh, pellets used for heat and pellets used to make electric power. That's been interesting, um, and this market continues to be 
uh, an incredible opportunity. Um, at the beginning of the call, I talked about the reemergence of the Dutch marketplace. We wrote a, a long story about the Dutch marketplace in last year's issue and the policy situation there demands that we probably refresh that uh, moving into this issue. We're also right now hard at work to write a story about uh, pellet production in Russia and then uh, really an emerging player in Europe right now, Latvia and Estonia and Romania, kind of the Eastern European pellet production base together, uh, Russia and those um, Estonia, Latvia, Romania produce about four and a half million tons of pellets in 2015. So definitely, definitely in a big time emerging uh, part of the world from a production standpoint. We're thrilled to be able to send this issue to the European Pellet Conference held in Wells, Austria. I was at that conference in 2014 and uh, I can tell you right now that that audience is definitely global. Uh, and it is very, very much an audience that uh, is worth getting in front of. And, and what's best about that is they know us too, and, and we've written extensively about that conference. We've profiled folks that go to that conference inside the issue. So I know that uh, people at the event will definitely uh, be looking forward to working through the issue, and certainly the content inside will uh, definitely uh, keep people moving that way. All right, let's talk next about the um, March-April issue, if we can. So next slide, please, Bob. Again, another market-based um, issue, foreign and domestic heating markets. So we really turned completely away from how it's used in an industrial context, and we look at uh, markets that are, com you know, markets generated for wood pellets uh, that are thermal in nature. We really chose this theme uh, for this issue because of the you know, high number of conferences and, and bonus distributions available to us that focus exclusively on heat. And uh, so this was really a slam dunk for us. It was a very popular issue this year. We were very proud of it. And uh, it had a nice presence at a number of different industry events focusing exclusively on thermal markets. Uh, I'm looking forward to this issue. I know that Canada right now uh, is doing a lot of work around their domestic marketplace. Uh, it's a bit, it's a challenging environment, uh, the thermal market right now because of the low price of fossil fuel uh, heating products, energy products. So uh, heating oil is at all-time lows. And so that'll be interesting to look at the, the impact of, of that marketplace reality on, on the industry. Um, but, but again, strong issue uh, with great bonus distributions. It's highly likely that the audiences at these events will uh, definitely find themselves inside the title at some point when they're at these events. All right, let's move into uh, May, June and talk a little bit about that. Feedstock and supply chain sustainability. This is a massive issue. Uh, with the industry. Not to say that the industry doesn't have its arms around its supply chain and that the uh, supply chain isn't already sustainable. Uh, in the vast majority of instances it is. The challenge is how do we prove that to a skeptical general public uh, that has the ear of policymakers all over the world. And you can see the industry and, and the um, supporting cast of characters that surrounds this industry gearing up, trying to come up with solutions to this very real problem. Um, things like the Sustainable Biomass Partnership have emerged as a response to this um, skepticism that policymakers have around this energy product. And there is some. So I'm looking forward to this. We just, again, talked uh, about the, the uh, January, February issue, thought about doing a story about the Sustainable Biomass Partnership's ability to, to win the support of these pellet buying countries, and we decided to defer that story to this issue because it's such a slam dunk and a great fit for this thematically. Bonus distribution here at Waste Expo. Uh, and we're looking for more... Um, bonus distributions that are a little more closely aligned with feedstock, and I think we will probably end up with a couple of good ones here, and we'll be sure and update everybody when that happens as to what those are, and certainly if this is an issue or this is a category that you're playing it, uh, playing in, and I know there are some certifiers on the phone right now, I certainly saw them on the registration list, 
uh, be sure and ask your representatives where we ended up with bonus distributions because I know that we're going to end up with a couple more there. All right, let's move along. Next slide, please. Again, uh, production story or production themed issue. Production efficiencies and regulatory issues. We had a lot of fun with this issue last year. I wrote an entire story on uh, pellet bagging equipment. Fascinating. Uh, some of that manufacturing actually happens here in the Twin Cities. Major marketplace player in that category is here. Went and learned a tremendous amount about automated pellet bagging. Uh, a large, a large number of our readers operate pellet facilities that manufacture pellets for the uh, retail market, and so this is a this is an investment that a lot of facilities are making. Not to say that necessarily packaging is going to be where we end up with features for this issue, but uh, as this marketplace continues to get competitive, more and more competitive, what efficiencies? Our, our producers looking for in terms of driving down their overall cost of production. These are the types of stories that end up here. And a great bonus distribution, Pellet Fuels Institute annual event. So if that constituency, if the producer that you know is a member of the PFI, maybe the you know producers that are focused more on the, the residential market, if that is an audience that you really want to get in front of, definitely July, August um, issue is something that you need to think about. Next slide, please. So this is a, another one that we had just a, a great, great time doing this year. Infrastructure and distribution channels. How, how do these products get to market? Where are the, the bottlenecks in the infrastructure and distribution networks? Uh, we did a, a great uh, article this year on uh, that included a very good producer survey. If you, if you really want to re read a good issue of Pellet Mill Magazine, this would probably be the one I point you at for 2016, be, for principally because of the survey. And I got to really tip the cap to the industry. We asked the industry to participate in the survey. We were asking them very specific questions about uh, how much of their business was represented with uh, big box retailers, how much uh, inventory could they store at their location, uh, how did they get it to market? Did they employ a direct salesperson? Did they use uh, brokers? And, and 50 uh, industry professionals responded. Producer respondents responded. So about 25% of the folks we sent it to, which is just tremendous for a survey, and it really, really uh, helped uh, illustrate the, the key points of that particular story. I did a story about the first Panamax uh, scale vessel to be loaded with wood pellets in British Columbia and what that meant to the industry, what that meant to the, the maritime industry as well. So, um, and then not, not surprisingly, this particular theme has been paired with the UCPA Exporting Pellet Conference, which uh, we've got a strong, strong relationship with that event. Pellet Mill Magazine enjoys great presence there. Uh, we just we were just at this event seems like yesterday, and uh, at one of the major breaks uh, when the audience came back in, there was an issue of Pellet Mill magazine on every chair, and I saw people pick it up immediately and start working through it. So, if if larger scale producers are really kind of the producer that you're looking to get in front of September October, great bet for you. Next slide. And this is the final issue. Uh, of the of of the thematic editorial year, a little bit of a spoiler alert here. This is the actual cover of uh, this year's November December issue. We're really happy with how this this issue uh, turned out. As I said at the beginning of the call, a challenging issue for us. Again, uh, we've we've got great relationships in Western Europe and a number of people that we know there that we rely on and go to and can point us in the right direction for sources, but. I think we were definitely plowing some new ground with this particular issue, uh, which is great. And we've established some decent relationships. And I think our team learned a tremendous amount about uh, the South Korean marketplace, which the Canadians are, are watching very, very closely. Um, I think that was a marketplace that uh, that constituency was counting on to really grow and provide um, their industry a, a lot of opportunity for growth because of the tremendous advantage they enjoy from a shipping perspective out of British Columbia. And it's coming along, but it's, it's offering some challenges. And it's, it's, uh, 
certainly generating a lot of interest in other wood processing uh, locations in the region, predominantly Vietnam, and I wrote an article about pellet production in Vietnam for the issue. I recommend you dive into it. This Asian marketplace, if, if wood pellets are going to become a truly global energy commodity, then you can expect and should expect the Asian market to continue to grow. Um, and again, great, great timing because uh, this, this issue goes, is mailed to the attendees of the Wood Pellet Association of Canada annual conference. And again, everyone's interested in the Asian marketplace. Everybody who manufactures wood pellets in this country is watching that place. So I'm, I can assure you that they're reading this issue cover to cover. But the, the, the constituency that has a particular interest in this marketplace, again, are Canadian producers. So that's why we paired it with that particular bonus distribution. All right, we're just about finished here. I really thank you for your attention. Let's go to the next slide real quick, Bob. I want to talk briefly because I know there are a, a number of folks that probably would find this um, uh, conference very interesting and do support the event. That's the International Biomass Conference and Expo. It's happening in Charlotte, North Carolina, April 11th through the 14th. Uh, without a doubt, the most well uh, represented constituency inside of the biomass industry at this event are pellet producers. They're our number one producer registration and have been for the last three years. And I fully expect that continue, particularly with the fact that it's in the southeast. We're having a very interesting pre-conference there. Let's go to the next slide and talk about that. The Global Pellet Market Outlook Summit. I'm looking forward to putting this together uh, very much. A, a one day focus exclusively on where are these markets for wood pellets now, uh, which ones are expected to grow, which ones are expected to grow the fastest, which ones are likely to be relatively flat, and are we losing ground with any of these? Um, and it's not going to be just pellets for energy production. Uh, one thing that we just keep seeing again and again and again, particularly with producers maybe smaller than 100,000 uh, tons per year are these emerging markets that aren't related to energy in any way. Barbecue pellets or pellets as absorbents, pellets as animal bedding, equine, it, it goes on and on. And, and while the volumes of pellets in those that satisfy those other markets may not be huge, the prices and the margins that producers enjoy for those types of products is very significant and oftentimes makes a difference for their facilities. So that's on the 11th. Again, it's co-located with the IBCE. Uh, I've said enough today. I want to thank you all for your time. I'm going to one last uh, slide. I, I want John to talk about the offer that I promised everybody. John, why don't you go ahead and let everybody know the offer, and then we'll let folks get back to their day. All right. Thanks, Tim. Uh, we can definitely look forward to some extremely relevant content in 2016, so I'm excited to see what you and your team put together uh, and are going to put together for those stories. Um, so as promised, we have a, on today's call, for everyone who's on, we are offering 35% off on, one, on a full page print advertisement. This offer is good through January 1st, so if you are interested in test driving Pellet Mill Magazine and you want to try it out, um, give us a call at, at the number below or give us an, uh, you know, one of our account managers a call or email them and, and you'll receive a 35% discount. So thank you for being on today's call. We hope you choose to leverage Pellet Mill's content, circulation, and reach when designing your advertising and marketing strategy in 2016. Thanks again, and have a great day.